Hello dear students. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you will be fine. My name is Engineer Nirmal Sukhsha. I am lecturer in the Department of Technology, Sarhad University of Science and Information Technology, Shaw. As I am teaching you the subject design of hydraulic structure, today is your lecture number 14. In lecture number 14, we will continue about the topic courses on the gravity dam. Some of the courses we have already studied in the previous lecture. In this lecture, we will study about uh, earth and silt pressure. So, coming to the topic, uh, gravity dams are subjected to earth pressures on the downstream and upstream faces where the foundation trench is to be backfilled. Except in the abundant section, in specific cases, earth pressure have usually a minor effect on the stability of the structure and it may be ignored. Silt is also treated as a saturated cohesionless soil having full uplift and whose values of internal friction is not materially changed on account of submergence. According to IS codes, IS code recommends that uh, a horizontal silt and water pressure is assumed to be equivalent to that of a fluid with a mass of 1360 kg per cubic meter. And uh, vertical silt and water pressure is determined as if silt and water together have a density of 1925 kilogram per cubic meter. This is the total silt pressure which is applied on the centroid and the total force acts on the surface is equal to the, the total pressure acts on this uh, dam or the total cell pressure acting on the dam is uh, equal to pH2 while this portion in this portion this is the pressure of water the cell pressure is in the trapezoidal shape while the water pressure is in the triangular shape the total cell pressure is equal to the total amount of silt accumulated here and is calculated by finding the area and multiplying the unit weight of silt with the area and we will get the total uh, weight or total pressure of or total force of silt on the uh, on the dam per unit length. Next is ice pressure. Ice expands and contracts with changes in temperature. When the temperature is low, the ice contracts, while as the temperature exceeds, the ice expands. In a reservoir completely frozen over, means in winter seasons, a drop in the air temperature or in the level of the reservoir Water may cause the opening up of cracks which subsequently fill with water and freeze solid. When the next rise in the temperature occurs, the ice expands and if restrained, it exerts pressure on the dam. Good analytical procedures exist for computing ice pressure, but the accuracy of uh, results is dependent upon certain physical data which have not been adequately determined. Ice pressures may be provided for at the rate of 250 kilopascal applied to the face of the dam over the anticipated area of contact of ice with the face of the dam. The problem of ice pressure in the design of dam is not encountered in Pakistan except perhaps in a few localities. 
Next is uh, wave pressure. The upper portions of dams are subjected to impact of waves. Wave pressure against massive dams of appreciable height is usually of little consequence. The force and dimensions of waves depend mainly on the extent and configuration of water surface, the velocity of wind and the depth of the uh, water reservoir. As the height of wave is generally more important in the determination of the free board requirements of dams to prevent overtopping by wave splash. An, empir an empirical method has been recommended by A.T. Savelli for computation of wave height which is HW in meters which takes into account the effect of shape account uh, the effect of the shape of reservoir and wind velocity over water surface rather than the land by applying necessary corrections. The wind velocity of uh, 120 km per hour over water in the case of normal pole conditions and of 80 km per hour over water in case of maximum reservoir condition should generally be assumed for calculation of wave height if meteorological data is not available. Sometimes the following monitors empirical formula are used to estimate uh, the wave height. The formulas are uh, HW is equal to 0 0.032 under the root VW into F plus 0 0.763 minus 0 0.271 into F or F power 1 4. Therefore, uh, F is less than 32 km. The next is uh, HW is equal to 0 0.032 under the root VWF and this formula is used for F uh, greater than 32 km. Here in these formulas VW is the wind velocity in km per hour and F uh, is the fetch length of the reservoir in kilometers. If the fetch length is less than uh, 32 kilometers the uh, first formula is used while if the fetch length is 32 greater than 32 kilometers the, this formula the second formula is used to calculate the height of wave in meters wave pressure diagrams uh, can be approximately by triangle 1 2 3 as you can see in the figure triangle uh, this is 1 2 3 this is the triangle so uh, wave pre pressure can be approximately find out by this triangle 1 2 3 maximum uh, pressure pw in kilopascal occurs at 0 0.125 uh, hw above the still water level and is given by pw is equal to 24 hw so this is the maximum pressure that occurs at a uh, height of 0 0.125 hw this is the height 0 0.125 or 3 by 8 hw from the still water level and this is equal to 24 hw the total pressure will be act at the centroid and is equal to 20 h square hw square in kilonewton or the total force pw is equal to 20 h square hw hw square in kilonewton The total wave force Pw in kilonewton is given by the area of the triangle and is equal to Pw is equal to 20 Hw square. This Pw equal to 24 Hw will act at this point and is equal to 1 over 8 Hw. This is the total, the first Pw and this point is, at this point the total uh, uh, maximum pressure or wave pressure at this point will be equal to 24 Hw above the still water level 
and this is the end of our today's lecture